The business edition of 21 Minutes with KKB is proudly brought to you by MTN Business Broadband. First National Bank, Bank of the Changeables. The Mikes Electronics Company Limited, large and in charge, with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. Designed for the driven. Hello there, uh, and many thanks for joining us for yet uh, another interesting episode of uh, the business edition of 21 Minutes with KKB. And today, uh, I'm coming to you from the office of a uh, gentleman many of you love, many of you know, many of you admire a lot for all kinds of reasons, of course. Uh, I, I, what I usually say is that I love him because he makes my feet look so beautiful. Anytime I step somewhere, uh, people look at me and they're like, oh, I love your shoes. I say, hi, you don't know. <laughs> I have a secret weapon. Yeah. So today uh, we are at the office of Tony Senaya, Chief Executive Officer for Horseman Shoes. And in the next 21 minutes, you're going to have a very, very interesting conversation with him. Stay tuned. When we connect, everything is possible. Whatever seems unreachable becomes even closer. Building partnerships. Redefining the norms. Because when we connect, being there becomes possible and new ideas come to life. Stay ahead and stay connected with MTN Business Broadband, superior internet solutions that drive your dreams. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. From weekend warrior to workhorse, when you get behind the wheel of the new MGZS. The luxurious sedan experience meets the rugged frontier spirit of the SUV. Indulgently generous interiors, hill start assist system for unwanted uphill traffic, and the touchscreen infotainment system with Apple CarPlay for easy mobile phone. Designed for the driven, So, um, thanks for staying with us. And like I said, today we are talking about the Horseman shoe story. Um, for some of you who may have heard or seen some of his products, um, I'm sure you know of, there's one thing you can attest to, the premium quality that comes with the shoes. Um, if you've not seen or heard of any of such things, well, this is it, I'm wearing one right here. And I've, I think I've done this for what, six years? I've been wearing your shoes for about six yeah. years now. When, when, when you're at Joy, hey. when you're small, you're, 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 you're a big man. You're a big man and you're still stuck with us. Thank you very much. Okay. So, so that's the man, Tony Senaya. And uh, Tony is the CEO of Horseman Shoes. Uh, Tony, uh, many thanks for agreeing to do this. Thank you. We are really privileged to be here. And uh, um, should I say we are proud of you? That's an understatement, you know. Well, I mean, it's a journey that um, both of us <laughs> have embarked upon. I mean, like you said, six years right. ago, you were still... Um, you were buying us. Yeah, were yeah, yeah. Us, yeah, yeah. So we've done well. Congratulations to both of us. Challenge, challenge, challenge. And we are uh, part of ourselves. Uh, fantastic. I mean, fantastic. Again, his shoes are amazing. For those of you who have tried his products before, I don't even have to sell him. You know, um, it goes without saying. Uh, but for those of you who are watching this show for the first time, remember this show is probably brought to you by MTN Business. MTN Business is your partner for growth, and MTN Business are something very, very amazing for up and coming businesses, micro, small, medium scale enterprises. Listen, you don't have too much luxury. You don't have too much money and too much time to be wasting on all kinds of things. All you have to do is to sign up for the SME Plus uh, package by MTN Business. What it does is very simple. It affords you the opportunity to combine all the packages from data, SMS to call plans, everything in one package just for you. And it makes life so easy. On Mondays, for instance, from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., you're able to call all your partners, your folks, so from your clients to your workers to your business affiliates elsewhere, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., free calls once they are on MTN. 
it's absolutely free. All you have to do is very simple. Dial star 5060 hash to sign up today, or you can also WhatsApp or call the number 0244308111 for more information. And then you stay connected everywhere you go. The show is also brought to you in partnership with First National Bank. It's the bank of the changeables. Listen, again, um, you know that when you're starting a business, you need a bank to be your backbone, to be there for you. The best bank to do that is First National Bank. It's the bank of the changeables. Now, it's uh, the bank is actually offering uh, you uh, an opportunity to switch and enjoy zero monthly account fee with any of their business check accounts. So it means that if you switch to First National Bank today, the first three months are for free. You don't have to pay anything for account maintenance or any such thing. Charlie, you know they like this. What more do you want, right? So do that switch today. You are enjoying three months fee, free banking anytime you open a business check account between now and uh, the end of the year. In fact, it goes up to September of 2022. So that's a pretty long period, you know? It makes a lot of business sense to do this. The impossible just got bigger and better with First National Bank. And I said, bank, it's the bank of the changeables. One small change you make today can make a huge difference tomorrow. Visit any of their branches in Accra, Kumasi, or Tech Radio. Call the number 0242-435050. And they will make sure to send one of their very friendly uh, business bankers to you to start the switch process. First National Bank, how can we help you? Now... How can you help me? Well, uh, just pay attention to this very interesting story of Tony Senaya. Um, I, I don't want to be the one to say anything because he's here. So let's hear him. Tony, um, again, let me thank you for agreeing to do this. But let's start by um, asking about your story. You've done this for how long? Um, we are in the 11th year. 11 years, 11 years. as an entrepreneur. Uh, yeah. Wow. How easy or difficult is the journey? How has it been so far? Well, I mean, easy, 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 easy shouldn't be part of it. <laughs> shouldn't be in the sentence. Um, it's been very, very difficult. Right. Yet, um, I must say, it's also been fulfilling because mm. um, we have chopped some little successes that we, we have to celebrate because mm. um, being in business in Ghana for 11 years is, is not a joke. Yeah. You know? So, yes, um, the journey has been that of... Um, Tears, mm. blood, sweat, yes, and um, a few laughter here and there. But generally, it's been a very difficult journey. Mm. Difficult in what sense? Is it in acquiring capital to start, or getting people to buy, or getting the know-how? Or difficult in what sense? Um, um, so the challenges can be put in categories, okay. and depending on um, the depending on how far we've come. Mm. So I mean, when you ask businesses what their challenges are, most of them will tell you it's um, capital. Right. Yes, uh, but we have gone past that stage. That is not to say that we've gotten capital. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but as I sit here right now, our mm. major challenge is um, human resource. Um, okay. Because we are in a space where we need skilled labor, mm. you know. So, um, <clears throat> unfortunately, we've got into a dispensation where the young people are not learning skills. They are not going through the apprenticeship system. Yeah. And this is not peculiar to only even the shoemaking industry across board. So mm. mechanics will tell you they don't have people they are training. Tailors will tell you they don't have people they are training. The reason why we will say that we are bringing in tailors and um, tilers and carpenters from Lume and, elsewhere, yeah. and yeah. Benin and mm -hmm. even Nigeria yeah. because we don't have the skill. And those who even have the skill lack the attitude. Mm. You know? so, uh, so where we are now, our main challenge is getting the skill labor to, to work with. So that is one of the major challenges. And indeed, capital. Capital has always been an issue. Mm. So um, it, it's a myriad of problems. Then we have um, the, the the statutory organization, the government agencies on mm. the other side. Um, the money you have to keep paying, taxes the, here and there. The taxes, right. um, the frustrations you go through, the mm. bureaucracies and all that. So right. it, it, it's a myriad of um, problems to just... Um, to stifle your, your growth, if, mm. if I have to say that, yeah. Let's take it back a bit, right? Let's look at the beginning of all of this. Um, what's your background to begin with? Um, I read sociology from the University of Ghana. Okay, sociology. Okay, so a young man, very handsome guy, mm. read sociology, a lot of girls <laughs> in such classes. <laughs> then you say you want to be a shoemaker. Mm -hmm. Why? So um, before I left Legon, um I really wanted to do, to work with an international um, NGO because okay. naturally I love people development. Okay. You know? So um, those were the organizations I applied to. I remember I applied to um, 
Conan and Adwa Foundation, yeah, yeah. yeah. And, 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 and a few of them. But along the line, too, I knew I wanted to open a vocational training institute one day. Okay. I had never come into contact with shoemaking. So when I was doing my national service, I had a pendant in the company car I was using. Mm. A guy walked to me in traffic. Oh, you had a company car when you were doing national service? <laughs> <laughs> a guy walked to me. I was selling beer. So I had a small van. <laughs> a guy walked to me in traffic and it's called Amanfo. I went to Premier College. Okay. Then he said, he lived at Aduato. Aduato is a suburb around Premier College. So mm. I asked him, "Why? what are you doing in Accra if you are a commercial firm? Then he said, oh, he learned sewing. Okay. But after weaning himself off his master, he didn't have money to set himself up. Mm. So he came to Accra to sell in the streets, gather money and go and set himself up. Mm. So it dawned on me that there are many of his likes around, yeah. you know, who have the skills, but catapulting it into business is the challenge. Mm. So, well... I just said to myself casually, one day when I get money, I will build a vocational training institute and put all these guys together and we will produce and sell. Mm. Then um, when my sales are just about ended, I have a, a man in my house who has a, who had a very rickety shop who was making shoes. So after, after work, I'll go sit with him, have conversations, pull design from the internet and ask, Master Bit Nairi. Mm. So I bought one pair from him, mm. took it to work and my colleagues liked it, you know. They wondered how I could afford a pay, considering the fact that we were being paid 125 cities then. Yeah, at the time. Yeah, at that, yeah. that time, you know. So, um, no, they didn't believe it was made in Ghana. So, those who knew where I lived will come and place orders. Then I had a friend at PWC who ordered a pair, took it to work, and then I started receiving calls. Mm -hmm. Then it dawned on me that it didn't really matter to the Ghanaian where the shoes were coming from, provided, provided good enough or, or, or good yeah. quality, you know. Mm. So, for me, then and then, I realized that there's an opportunity. One hand, I knew shoemakers who, for them, will not sell even more than two pairs in a week. For them, it's just a vocation. Yeah. On the other side, I knew people who were interested in getting good shoes. Okay. So I decided to make a business out of it. So mm. I started ordering from the man, sometimes on credit. I will order for maybe five pairs, mm -hmm. pay for two, go and sell and bring back the balance. Okay. That is how I started, started buying from him. Then in 2010, I set up my workshop in Kumasi. Um, Kumasi because that's where I grew up. Okay. Um, Kumasi because by virtue of the fact that Nkrumah built the shoe factory, yeah. we have a lot of skilled labor in Kumasi when it comes to shoes. Mm. So I spoke to my dad and said, oh, we've been, within the uh, landlord association, there's a young guy who does shoes. Okay. So I got some pieces of leather and went to see this guy. He gave me three weeks to complete 20 pairs of sandals. It took him three months. So I asked him what the challenge was. He told me... Um, he didn't have all the equipment, so he had to go to town to finish off some of, some parts of the job. So I asked him, if we want to produce under one shelter, what do we need? They gave me a list. I went to Kumasi Magazine to ask around the price, mm -hmm. to ask around, noted down the prices and then raised money. And then I started producing in August 2010. When we connect, everything is possible. Whatever seems unreachable becomes even closer. Building partnerships. Redefining the norms. Because when we connect, being there becomes possible and new ideas come to life. Stay ahead and stay connected with MTN Business Broadband, superior internet solutions that drive your dreams. Sign up today on broadband.mtn.com.gh or call or WhatsApp 0244-308-111. Kajo, I wish you well on your new job and place. Hello, Grandpa. My grandson, I learned you are leaving your father's hacienda to go and increase your standard of living to an astronomical quotient. Just go quack over, bro. I believe that you are trying to bless him. This is my pneumatological abrasion from the Abinkunabolis to the eschatological divinity. I bought you this from the Makers Electronics Company Limited. Take it. Go forth and conquer. My son, when you receive your first salary, who 
our next line of action, make the sure so we to the Makers Electronics Company Limited. Ube wo the Makers Electronics Company Limited. Our type for highway. Ube say wamo. Ewa Amasa Manzongo Junction. Ashra Manso Omo Falco Flats. Kumasi. Ah hini makoko be. The Makers ema up to sixty seven percent discount. Fred the Makers Electronics Company Limited. This year zero five five two 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 two. 253 and a 055 The can once the Makers Electronics Company Limited. The Makers Electronics Company Limited. Large and in charge with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. Very, very impressive story. So so you saw a need um, for quality shoes. Mm -hmm. um, and then you found a way to solve that problem and make some money. Was it lucrative though? Yes, um, it, has been, it, it has been lucrative. I mean, 11 years, if we haven't stopped amidst all these challenges, then uh, yes, obviously it is paying bills, you know, um, uh, it is paying rent somewhere. So for me, that is the joy that I derive from doing right. this. Right. Beyond myself, the people that I have been with for the past 10, 11 years, um, they come back to work because um, it has been fulfilling for them. Mm. So yes, it, it has been very lucrative. Okay, it's an interesting question I want to ask. For some, it was 50 Ghana cities. Just <laughs> for others, it was other things. What was it for you? <laughs> um, I, I can't put a figure to it, but at that time, I think I was buying the shoes from, I, I used to call him Master, Master Ifa. I think he was giving it to me at 60 cities. So um, if I, I could pay for three pairs and um, ask him to do maybe six or seven. Mm. So um, it wasn't, uh, I, I can't put a figure to it, but I remember when I was setting up the workshop, then I needed a bit of money. So my dad contributed, um, my dad contributed, my sister also contributed. So uh, yeah, I, um, I started with um, some good money, not so hefty okay. an amount, but yeah, um, it was so, in so and So at least for you, it was 60 Ghana. Well, I <laughs> <laughs> okay, so let's look at, um, the process. I mean, mm -hmm. now you've conceived the idea, you are trying to do it. And like, how difficult was it raising money to get it started, to get it off the ground, yeah. you know, as a real business? How difficult was it so, getting access um, to funds? At first, I had to test the idea. Right. And um, I didn't even know that there was a science to it. Mm. So when you do the journey and you go through some, some trainings, then you realize that, oh, you've been on the right track mm -hmm. all this while. Mm -hmm. So how did I test the ideas? Through my friends so when yeah. my friends buy the reaction yeah. so some were buying not because um it was their friend who was producing the shoes they bought because they liked it yeah so after doing that for like six months and i i realized that um, my sales were increasing yeah. then i decided that well this is an opportunity that i can really um take further that is really the reason why i started around you know, in fact 2009 that was when i was doing the buying okay. and selling okay then i i ran the whole year and then August, I set up my workshop. So um, it was difficult. And yes, when the time came to get money to acquire the machines, um, in the books, they will tell you you need family and friends. Mm -hmm. And now I've heard there's another F called Fools. You know? So <laughs> I fell on my first, first two Fs, family and friends. Like I said, my dad was very supportive. Mm. My sister was very supportive. I had friends um, whom I called. I was in Kumasi and I called them. I need this amount. And um no no agreement no nothing they were willing to support mm. and i think it it feeds into who you are not necessarily the idea yeah you know so i have built relationships over the years so i had to fall on them mm. to support me um so in the initial stages for small businesses you don't need a lot to start if you are unable to raise money from your immediate surroundings then um, you have to really look at your personality your relationships and even perhaps the idea so yes, um, starting, I didn't struggle in a lot to get funding. Mm. And um, when, when I set up the workshop in August 2010, the first gig we did was to supply school sundowns wow. to a lot of schools. Yeah. Um, in France, Pem, we did shoes for GSTS. How did you get those deals? I think that's the thing. How did you get it? So Chen um, Chen it was a very simple proposal I wrote. Okay. I think four lines, then I, I attached a catalog samples that we have done and i even took those pictures with my phone mm. so i printed them out and sent it to those schools i some i didn't need some i met the head the heads some i didn't meet the heads so those who came and saw my samples called me and then we negotiated 
I didn't know anybody. It was so a, no connection, no nope, link anywhere. Nope, 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 nope. I remember um Accra girls um Auntie Veru to call her Auntie Veru. When I went there, she had sacks of sandals behind her desk. Mm. And mine was even pricey. But she settled on my on my on my sandal because she admitted that the quality was there, mm. you know. So it was that simple. But then I also learned a lesson in the um I would later realize that schools don't pay cash up front. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, became kakra. Yeah. <laughs> kakra came. Yeah, kakra yeah, came. So yeah. it, it, it really suffocated me. So mm. in 2010, December, even though I had done a lot of business, I've supplied a lot of schools. I owed a lot. I owed suppliers. Yeah. I owed workers, you know. So anytime my phone rang, um, my, my, my heart, my, my heart um, skipped a bit because, and my mom wo- Ask me, you may not die. It was no, it was a tough time. But I mean, these guys were expecting money to yeah. to chop Christmas, yeah. and um, schools were not paying me. So since then, um, I realized that it takes more than just writing a proposal and then agreeing verbally to supply um, institutions, mm. or, and for that matter, transact any sale. You have to have written down agreement, understand their payment, and all that. So 2010, even though it was exciting to do school business. It was also a very difficult year for me. Mm. How did you uh, maneuver that situation, though? Um, I had taken money from friends, like I said, mm. some with very little interest. But because payments delayed, all my profits turned in, accrued mm. um, to their interest. You know, so I didn't make any money out of it, and um, the profit margins too were very marginal. Yeah. So even though you are doing the numbers, um, there the, the, is it's very marginal and profit margin. Um, very marginal profits and the once payments delay your interest also goes up mm. so eventually you end up um, paying everything back to where you took the money mm. so yes um, I, I I was able to it, it took a while I mean it took three months six months for some of the people who gave me materials and even some who gave me money to get their monies back mm. but yeah because um, the good was there I explained to them I answered almost every call Except when I was in Trotro, but I cannot answer them. So we still cannot know. So when I get down, I will call you back and explain why even I missed the call in the first place yeah. and plead for renegotiation. You know, I have one guy who at a point said, "Okay, um, he understands. So we should we should stop calculating the interest. When I get the money, I should come and pay him the principal and something small. Mm. You know. So yeah, people came through for me. So for what what would be your advice to? A young entrepreneur who finds himself in a situation such as yours, except he may not have people who may be so benevolent like your the test were. Um, what, what would be your advice to him or her? So first and foremost, you see, when you realize that you will not honor your promise or you not fulfill the agreement, don't let them call you or don't don't wait till the time is up. Call them a day, a week before that, chief. I said we would. I will pay you on the 11th of November. But looking at things, it may not be possible. So let me come for renegotiation because anybody who invests, they know that there are risks. Of course, you know? yeah. people get angry when you try to be dodgy with them. Exactly. But when you are so upfront with them, mm. they understand. What else can they do? Mm. They can't kill you because they also need their money. Mm-hmm. You know. So um, for me, it is honesty. Mm. Apart from that, I don't know anything else. Is this something that's lacking in today's young entrepreneur? Yes, please. Well, it is not only entrepreneurs. I think that even the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian, the Ghanaian people in general. Ghanaians are not honest people. No, we are not. You know. Um, Why? Why do you I, say that? Normally, I, I would also ask, when we say, the, who is the Ghanaian? What are our values? What are our values? What are we teaching our kids at home? What are we teaching our kids in school? And um, you see, the honesty, the honesty is, is, it sounds a very big word, but we live it all the time. Mm-hmm. Parents are in front of their kids. Uh, and they're lying on they're the lying phone. They're lying on the phone. Mm. Oh, so the, kids, so the child they are, learns it. They, they learn it. Mm. So I always ask, what are our value systems? You see, elsewhere, we give examples, but we realize that the soft skills that we don't see is mm. what is building those countries, you know. Someone tells you, Jamie Jansen, so I'll be there in 13 minutes. 13 minutes, I've no free feedback. <laughs> Where are you, Meba? Where are you? Oh, I'll be one hour late. Mm. Let's agree. Okay, I'll be one hour. But no, they will not tell. I'm on my way coming. You know, so um, I, I, it is not only the entrepreneur who is dishonest. I think that it is 
our our value system then who the Ghanaian is not until we are able to define who we are and set and set up values right from home through the schools to the churches to the workplace for for I can relate, honestly. I, if I want my cameraman right now, it's just like that. Why are you? Oh, what was my bow? <laughs> you yeah. know. So I get it. Yeah, but some would also say that um, some say these things because they are scared of perhaps the reaction that may come if they are to tell you the truth that, you know what, I said I would leave in 30 minutes time, but I'm here to even set, set foot out of my house. Look, it's okay. Let the person get angry, but they, at least they know the truth. Mm. They will still get angry anyway. When you give them 30 minutes and in an hour's time you're not there, they will still get angry. So just tell them the truth. Mm. And these things, like I, they go a very long way to define who you are. Mm -hmm. And we lack it. Mm. Everybody, I don't know if you mentioned the politicians, Asofo, journalists. No, you are the politicians. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we we tend to overlook these mm. skills. These, but they're very essential. They are very, very they so they make us who we are. It helps build your credibility. Exactly. Mm. Exactly. There are people who come here and they want credit. You give them the credit. When you call, they don't even answer. Mm -hmm. it. Call me and tell me, oh, things are harder for me. So I beg, give me a year. Mm. Already you owe me. So. Six months, I cannot come to your house and drive you. But once you tell me, give me a year, I go to bed. In a year's time, I call you, mm -hmm. hoping that you, you, you honor, honor your promise. Time. Rather than ignoring phone calls. And a lot of people do that. They go for money, they squander the money, and they run away. You're, you're really saying it as it is. And some say, Charlie, sometimes it's not a very good thing for a businessman to be saying things so plainly. But unfortunately, I mean, who will tell us the truth? Mm. If, you can be, if we can be truthful to ourselves, you know. We disappoint customers all the time. I mean, when they place an order, we give them maybe two or three weeks. Look, we feel bad here. My assistants will tell you. When they when it goes beyond them, I call and I, I beg, I plead. You know, so I need to tell them when they come and they are angry, let them vent. Encourage them to get angry because it's better they get angry and they express it to us yeah. than take that pain and anger away. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, we have to be truthful to ourselves, you know. That is that is the only way we can build this country because it it affects us in a lot of ways. Mm. Reason why you take your your Christmas at Ali to the tailor and you tell you chief Virginia next week. Oh, you try it. I you sit there for one hour. Oh, I call on my. But meanwhile, your fabric is under the power somewhere. Yeah, it, it's a society we have built, so it yeah. cuts across. It cuts across, so not until we look at these things, we, I'm not sure we can build that mm. Ghanaian, that we can fulfill the Ghanaian dream. The business edition of 21 Minutes with KKB was proudly brought to you by MTN Business Broadband. First National Bank, Bank of the Changeables. The Makers Electronics Company Limited, large and in charge, with quality but affordable home appliances and consumer electronics. Designed for the driven.